Have you ever considered the courage it takes to stand up against powerful authorities? The story of the prophet Amos reveals not only his fierce dedication to divine justice, but also the timeless relevance of his message. Did you know that Amos was a simple shepherd who became one of the most influential voices for social justice in ancient Israel? His confrontations with the high priest Amaziah highlight the clash between truth and power, urging us to reflect on our own lives. By watching this video, you'll uncover how Amos's bold stance continues to inspire modern movements for equity and human rights. What lessons can we draw from his unwavering faith in the face of opposition? Join us as we explore these compelling questions and more, revealing how the echoes of Amos's message resonate with our own struggles for justice today. Don't miss out on this transformative journey. Amos was a man of simple origins, a shepherd by trade and a caretaker of sycamore fig trees in the humble village of Tico, just south of Jerusalem. His life was one of quiet dedication, centered on the care of his flock and the steady work of the land. He did not come from a priestly family, nor was he part of a line of prophets. In fact, he had no ambition for anything grand or extraordinary. Tico was a rural, isolated place, far from the bustling cities and corridors of power, and Amos found contentment in the simplicity of his routine. But life, as it often does, took an unexpected turn when Amos was called by God for a purpose far beyond his modest existence. This calling wasn't due to his social position or any special theological background. Rather, God chose Amos precisely because of his humility and his readiness to follow the divine will without question. Known up until then as nothing more than a shepherd and fig grower, Amos would soon become a prophet with a powerful mission to bring a warning and a call for repentance to the kingdom of Israel. At that time, Israel was experiencing an era of unprecedented prosperity under King Jeroboam II. The kingdom's borders were expanding, wealth flowed abundantly, and the people felt a strong sense of security and success. But beneath this facade of prosperity was a society crumbling from within. Moral decay had seeped into the foundations, justice was being manipulated, and the poor faced harsh exploitation. Religious practices had become hollow, with ritual worship losing its genuine spirit and devotion. It was in the midst of this troubled environment that God called Amos out of his peaceful life in Tico and sent him on a mission to deliver a harsh message to Israel, a warning against injustice, corruption, and spiritual hypocrisy. Amos, though not a trained prophet or a member of any prophetic school, understood the weight of his task. He openly acknowledged his humble background, explaining, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but had been directly appointed by God for this crucial task. He recounted, The Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Amos 7 verse 15. These words capture the seriousness of his calling a responsibility he never sought but accepted out of reverence and duty to God. With this divine command, Amos left behind his life in Tico and ventured into Israel, fully aware that his words would not be well received. He was stepping into a prosperous land, one that despite its wealth, was spiritually desolate. Amos's determination to answer God's call, even when it meant facing resistance and hostility, demonstrated his steadfast faith and his unwavering trust in God's justice. His mission was clear-cut. He was there to announce that judgment was imminent for Israel's sins. He wasn't sent to bring comfort or to soften his message for the wealthy and powerful. His role was to be a voice of truth in a society that had lost its way. Amos's mission involved challenging the comfort of those who had become complacent, denouncing the treatment of the poor, exposing the leader's corruption, and confronting the widespread pretense of worship. Amos warned the people that the day of reckoning was approaching and that the only chance for salvation lay in sincere repentance. The story of Amos reminds us that God often chooses the unexpected, those who seem least likely, to fulfill great tasks. Amos, a shepherd with no formal training, was called to carry a prophetic message that would endure throughout history. His life reveals that true greatness lies not in social status or power, but in the courage to listen to God's call and speak the truth, 
regardless of the risks involved. Amos's prophetic voice in Israel focused deeply on social justice and righteousness, values he saw as inseparable from genuine worship. His denunciations addressed the stark inequalities he observed daily. The wealthy amassed fortunes while the poor were pushed aside and forgotten. For Amos, this disparity was not just a social issue, but a moral crisis, a sign that Israel had strayed far from God's commandments and had embraced a form of worship that was empty of genuine faith. Amos viewed Israel's material success as hollow because it was built on the suffering and neglect of the vulnerable. This lopsided prosperity, concentrated in the hands of a privileged few, contradicted the principles of compassion and equity that Amos believed God demanded from his people. For Amos, justice was not an abstract concept, but a divine mandate. He believed that true worship of God was inherently linked to how one treated others, especially the less fortunate. In his view, the failure of Israelite society to uphold justice and fairness was a betrayal of their covenant with God, a violation that could not go unanswered. Therefore, Amos's prophecies warned of impending consequences if Israel did not repent and correct its ways. He saw that worship and devotion were meaningless without a commitment to justice and mercy. In his boldness, Amos dared to confront those in power, to speak truth to a society comfortable in its wealth, but blind to its own spiritual poverty. His words were a direct challenge to those who held power, wealth, and influence reminding them that no amount of ritual sacrifice could substitute for a lack of righteousness. Amos's message serves as a timeless reminder that spiritual integrity and social justice are intertwined, and that a nation's strength lies not in its wealth, but in its compassion and fairness. Amos's message was uncompromising. He didn't hold back in his condemnation of the wealthy elites who oppressed the poor and the authorities who distorted justice. He made it clear that genuine worship of God could never be divorced from the practice of fairness and morality in everyday life. Hate evil, love good, establish justice at the gate, Amos 5 verse 15. This powerful statement sums up the core of Amos's mission. God desires not mere rituals and offerings, but a commitment to justice in daily actions. Amos spoke directly to those who appeared devout filling the temples and making sacrifices, yet turned a blind eye to the plight of the suffering. In Amos's eyes, true spirituality had to be woven with compassion and justice, reaching beyond the boundaries of the temple and into the realities of daily life. Amos's prophetic outrage stemmed from his deep-seated conviction that God would not endure the corruption and neglect of justice forever. He warned Israel that divine judgment loomed on the horizon ready to sweep through the nation if the people failed to repent and change their ways. Amos used intense imagery to emphasize the urgency of this coming judgment, comparing it to the roar of a lion or the unstoppable advance of a blazing fire. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The sovereign Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Amos 3 verse 8. With these words, he conveyed the urgency of his message. The time for action was now, while there was still a chance to turn away from impending disaster. Amos's message wasn't only for ordinary citizens. It was especially directed at Israel's leaders, the individuals with the power and authority to address the injustices at the heart of society. He spoke out boldly against corrupt judges, dishonest merchants, and religious authorities who chose to overlook the suffering around them. Amos positioned himself as a champion for the oppressed, a voice for the voiceless, and he called out for justice on their behalf. His message was clear. Reconciliation with God would only come through a genuine return to justice and righteousness. Amos insisted that without these qualities, all religious practices would be hollow and meaningless. His words may have sounded harsh, but they were not devoid of hope. Amos reminded the people that if they truly repented, if they returned to the values of justice and compassion, God's forgiveness would follow, and the nation would find restoration. In Amos's eyes, social justice wasn't just a good moral practice. It was essential to genuine faith. His message invites each of us to reflect on how we treat others, especially those who are vulnerable or disadvantaged. For Amos, 
True worship went far beyond the acts of prayer and sacrifice. It was something that had to be lived out in acts of justice and mercy. To worship God, according to Amos, was to work toward a world that more accurately reflected God's will, a world where fairness and kindness prevailed. The visions Amos received from God were both haunting and symbolically rich, providing intense visual warnings for the people of Israel. Among the most profound of these visions was the one involving the plumb line. This vision took place as God revealed to Amos the spiritual decay of a nation that, although prosperous in wealth, was deeply corrupt and morally deteriorated. In this vision, Amos saw the Lord standing by a wall that had been built straight and true, holding a plumb line in his hand. The symbolism of the plumb line was striking. In construction, a plumb line is used to ensure that a wall is perfectly upright, that it hasn't veered off course. Here, the plumb line represented God's measure of Israel's righteousness. Just as a builder uses a plumb line to check the straightness of a wall, God was measuring Israel, assessing whether the nation aligned with the standards of justice and moral uprightness. The image suggested that God had set a high standard and Israel was found lacking. This was a critical moment in Amos' prophetic journey. The plumb line vision underscored a divine principle. God does not tolerate injustice indefinitely. His patience had limits, and Israel was reaching the end of that grace. This vision reinforced Amos' message that unless Israel repented, it would soon face divine consequences. This was not merely a warning, but a call for the people to examine themselves, to realign their lives with God's standards, and to seek a path back to righteousness before it was too late. Amos, therefore, was not simply issuing a prophecy of doom. He was giving Israel an opportunity to return to God's ways, a chance to make things right. Through his message, Amos urged the people to see that justice was not optional, but integral to their relationship with God. He preached that God's law extended beyond ritual purity and religious observance. It demanded justice as a reflection of faith. Amos's stance was bold, and he wasn't afraid to call out the flaws in society, particularly those in positions of power. His words served as a mirror, reflecting the deep inequalities and moral failures that had taken root in Israel. The message was clear. Wealth, power, and social status were meaningless if justice and compassion were missing. Amos's emphasis on righteousness and fairness brought attention to the disconnect between Israel's material wealth and its spiritual poverty. The book of Amos compels readers to examine their own lives and the society they inhabit, questioning the ways in which justice, or the lack thereof, manifests around them. Amos's prophetic voice echoes across time, challenging each generation to consider how justice, fairness, and true worship of God intertwine. According to Amos, to serve God is to seek a just world, one that honors divine principles through everyday actions. Amos understood that without a commitment to justice and righteousness, religious practices are hollow, devoid of real significance. Amos's teachings endure as a powerful reminder of the high value God places on justice and compassion. His message, though ancient, remains relevant, resonating with those who believe that true faith is reflected in how we treat others. Amos's life and words encourage each of us to strive for a world more aligned with God's will, a place where justice, kindness, and integrity guide our actions, and where true worship is inseparable from a dedication to the welfare of others. Amos found himself in a unique position as he received visions from God that were rich with symbolism, each one depicting the grim reality of Israel's moral and spiritual state. In one such vision, God asked Amos what he saw, and the prophet responded that he saw a plumb line. God's reply was serious and solemn. Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. Amos 7 verse 8. This was a symbolic message, using the plumb line to evaluate Israel's spiritual condition. The result, however, was unfavorable. The nation of Israel which was supposed to uphold God's principles and align with his commandments, had veered far from righteousness. The image of a crooked wall came to represent the people of Israel. Out of alignment, and therefore, 
incapable of standing firm when judgment arrived. This vision signified that God's patience had reached its limit. Up until that point, God had extended grace, overlooking Israel's transgressions, giving them a chance to repent. But now, holding the plumb line, God declared that the evaluation was final. Israel had been measured and found deficient. The wall symbolizing the nation was bent, crooked, and on the brink of collapse. There would be no more chances to delay, and judgment was now certain. Amos was given a heavy responsibility as a prophet. He was called to be the voice of this divine reality, no matter how dire it seemed. The vision was both direct and symbolic, reinforcing the idea that Amos's mission was to deliver the truth of God's judgment, as unsettling as it was. This judgment was inevitable because injustice and corruption had deeply infiltrated Israel's society, and the people had failed to align themselves with divine justice. Another profound vision was the basket of ripe fruit. God again asked Amos what he saw, and Amos answered that he saw a basket full of ripe fruit. This image initially suggested abundance and maturity. However, ripe fruit quickly reaches a point of decay. The vision hinted at something full and complete, yet on the verge of spoiling. God's response was unambiguous. The end has come for my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. Amos 8 verse 2. This marked the final limit of God's patience. Israel, represented by this ripe fruit, was now at the point of decay, and the opportunity for repentance was about to expire. The metaphor indicated that Israel was ready for judgment. They had reached the end of their moral and spiritual cycle, ripe for divine intervention. The image of the basket of ripe fruit conveyed a powerful message about the state of Israel. Although the nation had accumulated wealth and appeared stable, this prosperity masked a deeper, spiritual decay. Just as ripe fruit, once past its peak, begins to rot, Israel, too, was facing a downward spiral toward ruin. The nation's sins had built up, and despite outward prosperity, its moral core was withering away. Amos understood this vision to mean that Israel's society was at a critical point. Like fruit that is overripe and about to spoil, the nation would soon face the consequences of its choices, and there was no time left to delay. God's judgment would come without further postponements, sealing Israel's fate. This vision, too, was a powerful reinforcement of the inevitability of divine judgment. In the natural process, ripe fruit eventually spoils, just as Israel's sins would inevitably lead to its downfall. God showed Amos that the window for mercy and warnings had closed. The consequences of Israel's decisions were now inescapable. Just as one discards fruit that is spoiled, Israel was about to be harvested in judgment, and this judgment would be final. Amos was entrusted with the solemn duty of delivering this truth to the people. His message was clear and urgent. Israel's time for repentance was over, and divine retribution was imminent. This vision left no room for optimism or any possibility of delay, conveying that Israel's time had run out and judgment was right at their doorstep. The visions given to Amos used simple but profound imagery, helping him communicate these stark spiritual realities to the people of Israel. Both the plumb line and the basket of ripe fruit were tools for conveying the urgency of the situation. Amos's use of such metaphors and allegories allowed him to express complex, divine truths in ways that were relatable and impactful. The plumb line symbolized the precise standard of righteousness God expected, revealing how far Israel had strayed. The image of the ripe fruit, meanwhile, captured the idea of judgment as a natural consequence. Just as fruit eventually rots, Israel's sins had ripened to the point of no return. Through these visions, Amos was empowered to make clear that Israel's moral decay had reached a point of critical failure. The simplicity of the imagery enabled Amos to communicate a dire message with clarity. God's patience had been long-suffering, 
But the time had now come to address the corruption, oppression, and injustice that had grown unchecked within Israelite society. The vision of the plumb line showed that Israel had been measured and found lacking, while the basket of ripe fruit confirmed that the nation was overripe for judgment. This duality of message underscored the completeness of the impending judgment and the certainty that divine justice was about to be enacted. Amos's mission, therefore, was not just to warn, but to confront Israel with the reality of their actions and the consequences that would follow. He called for repentance, but also made it clear that there would be no further reprieves. His prophetic role was not only to reveal God's standard, but to show the people where they had failed to meet it. Amos understood that Israel's society, although materially prosperous, had become morally bankrupt, and his call was to redirect them back to God's principles before it was too late. This message, though ancient, resonates with each generation as a reminder that justice, righteousness, and moral integrity are fundamental to true faith. In delivering these prophecies, Amos highlighted a core principle of faith that endures through time. Justice is not merely a choice, but an essential aspect of one's relationship with God. God's standards do not change, and each society is measured against his plumb line. The visions given to Amos serve as timeless reminders that prosperity and power are hollow without righteousness. For Israel, the consequence of ignoring these principles was divine judgment. Amos's words endure as a powerful testament that God values justice, compassion, and integrity above ritualistic worship, and that his patience, though vast, has limits when corruption Amos takes spoke hold of society. Comparing the coming destruction of Israel to an earthquake, an event known to everyone as both terrifying and unstoppable. This comparison illustrated not only the intensity of God's judgment, but also its unavoidability. Amos wasn't simply warning of natural calamities. He used these images to symbolize the chaos that would engulf Israel when divine judgment fell. His vivid language was intentional, designed to jolt the people from their complacency, to make them confront their actions and the direction they had taken. Through dramatic allegories, Amos hoped to wake his people up, urging them to reflect on their behavior and consider the consequences they would soon face. One of the most startling messages Amos delivered was about the day of the Lord. For many in Israel, this term evoked a sense of triumph and liberation, a day when God would act powerfully in Israel's favor, defeating their enemies and establishing justice. They saw it as a day of exaltation, a moment when their nation would be uplifted and their foes defeated. Yet, Amos delivered an unexpected twist to this belief, challenging their expectations. Instead of a time of light and victory, Amos declared, the day of the Lord would be one of darkness, calamity, and divine judgment upon Israel itself. Known for his bold condemnations of societal corruption and wrongdoing, Amos warned that this day wouldn't bring the deliverance the people anticipated. Rather, it would bring suffering and upheaval. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord, Amos proclaimed. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. Amos 5 verse 18. With these solemn words, Amos shattered the popular belief in a triumphant day of the Lord. Instead, he foretold it as a period of profound distress, a day that would turn their expectations on their heads. This dark vision wasn't just a mild warning. It was an apocalyptic picture painted in the most dramatic terms. Amos spoke of the day as one with no escape, a time when the security people found in their wealth, alliances, and achievements would dissolve completely. In a striking metaphor, Amos likened the people's plight to a man fleeing from a lion only to meet a bear or entering his home and resting against a wall, only to be bitten by a snake. Amos 5 verse 19. Through these images, he communicated that there would be no refuge, no escape from the consequences of their actions. The day of the Lord would be one of revelation, unveiling the true moral and spiritual condition of Israel. Amos emphasized that God would not be moved by their sacrifices and religious ceremonies, which, in his eyes, were hollow gestures. Although the people continued to observe festivals and present offerings, these rituals did not please God, as they did not stem from genuine devotion or righteousness. I hate, I despise your religious festivals, 
Your assemblies are a stench to me. Amos 5 verse 21. God declared through Amos. This blunt rejection of their religious activities revealed that without justice and true righteousness, their worship meant nothing. Amos's warning was clear. Judgment was coming not for a lack of religious observance, but because the rituals were empty, unaccompanied by social justice or moral integrity. Amos also highlighted that the day of the Lord would have implications far beyond Israel. While many Israelites saw God as their own personal defender, Amos conveyed a broader view of God's justice, a judgment that would span beyond borders and affect all nations. In this, he revealed the universality of God's role as the judge of all humanity, not just Israel. The divine justice Amos spoke of was not confined to one people. It extended across nations, transcending political and geographical boundaries. This perspective elevated Amos's message, stressing that God's justice would reach all corners of the earth. Through these messages, Amos revealed a profound understanding of what true devotion to God required. He saw that many people mistook religious ritual for righteousness. They believed that observing ceremonies was enough to keep them in God's favor, even as they engaged in corrupt practices and ignored the needs of the poor and vulnerable. To Amos, their behavior represented a deep misunderstanding of what it meant to live under God's covenant. By warning of judgment and describing the day of the Lord as darkness, Amos aimed to correct this misinterpretation and emphasize that genuine faith requires justice and compassion. The earthquake analogy used by Amos also hinted at the scale and intensity of the coming judgment. Earthquakes are known for their indiscriminate destruction affecting all in their path. Just as an earthquake doesn't spare the wealthy or the powerful, neither would God's judgment, which would affect every level of Israelite society. This powerful image was Amos's way of making the people confront the seriousness of their actions. Through these dramatic comparisons, he tried to communicate that God's judgment would not just be an inconvenience, but an earth-shattering event, a reckoning that no one would be able to avoid or ignore. In emphasizing that sacrifices alone were insufficient, Amos confronted the notion that religious activities could compensate for moral failures. He argued that God was not interested in ritual for its own sake. What mattered was the spirit in which people live their lives, their actions toward others, and their commitment to justice. Amos's declaration that God despised their religious festivals highlighted the emptiness of ritual without righteousness. His message remains a timeless reminder that spirituality devoid of justice is hollow, and that true devotion is reflected not in ceremonies, but in ethical, compassionate living. For Amos, the fate of Israel was a solemn warning to all nations. By speaking of the day of the Lord as an event that would bring judgment to all, he universalized his message. It wasn't just Israel that would face divine scrutiny, but every nation. This broadened the scope of Amos's words, establishing him not just as a prophet for Israel, but as a prophet for humanity. His message highlighted a fundamental principle, that God's justice applies to all people, transcending national and ethnic boundaries. It was a profound call to recognize God's authority over the whole earth and to live accordingly. Ultimately, Amos's prophecies called for a radical rethinking of what it meant to be in a covenant relationship with God. The people of Israel believed that their identity and their observance of rituals would shield them from judgment. However, Amos's words revealed that true safety lay in aligning one's life with God's values, values of justice, integrity, and compassion. The day of the Lord would expose the hollowness of mere ceremony and bring to light the reality of people's hearts. It was a sobering message, meant to draw the people back to a genuine relationship with God, founded on justice and ethical behavior. By painting this apocalyptic vision, Amos set forth a powerful call for introspection and change. He urged the people to look beyond their rituals and examine the core of their faith. His warnings served as a wake-up call, a reminder that divine favor isn't something that can be earned through empty traditions or social status. Instead, it's about living in a way that reflects God's principles in everyday interactions. Amos' message transcended his time, 
offering insights that remain relevant for all who seek to live in alignment with divine justice. Stressing that genuine faith goes hand in hand with a commitment to justice, mercy, and truth. In his bold and urgent sermons, Amos placed great importance on a theme central to his message, the day of the Lord. To Amos, this wasn't merely an ominous prophecy of doom, but rather a clarion call for repentance, a plea for the people to change their ways while there was still time. His message was clear. There remained a window to turn back, to seek God with sincerity, and to live lives of integrity and justice. Amos warned that without this genuine repentance, the people would inevitably face judgment. Yet, despite his appeals, many failed to grasp the urgency of his message, misinterpreting the day of the Lord as simply a time of salvation for themselves, rather than understanding it as a reckoning for all, calling out injustice and wrongdoing wherever they occurred. The scope of Amos's message was strikingly expansive. He did not restrict his warnings to Israel alone, but also pronounced divine judgment upon Israel's neighboring nations. These weren't vague or general warnings. Amos was specific in naming the sins of these nations. Damascus, Gaza, Tyre, Edom, Ammon, and Moab all stood as targets of his prophecy. Each of these places, he claimed, had violated fundamental moral and human laws. They had acted with cruelty, betrayal, and merciless oppression of the vulnerable. Amos's prophecies highlighted that God's justice was universal, extending beyond Israel to all nations, and holding each one accountable for its actions. Amos began with Damascus, the capital of Syria, where he condemned the people for their unbridled brutality against Gilead. He portrayed their aggression with vivid imagery, accusing them of threshing Gilead with sledges having iron teeth, Amos 1 verse 3. This graphic picture was intended to highlight the extreme violence and inhumanity of their actions, portraying a people so hardened that they used instruments of brutality to dominate and destroy. Gaza, one of the main Philistine strongholds, was also harshly criticized. Amos condemned the Philistines there for capturing entire groups of people and selling them into slavery. The prophet viewed these acts as an unpardonable display of greed and utter disregard for human dignity. He warned that, due to these crimes, God's judgment would be fierce. Walls and palaces would burn as divine retribution swept through the city. Tyre, another city well known for its wealth and its status as a thriving trade center, did not escape Amos's denunciations. This city-state, which had once been allied with Israel, had committed a grave offense by breaking a long-standing alliance and betraying an entire community of refugees, turning them over to be enslaved. Amos declared that God would not overlook this act of treachery and that Tyre, too, would face the consequences. By prophesying this downfall, Amos emphasized a key point. Alliances should be built on principles of loyalty and respect, not convenience or personal gain. The betrayal by Tyre showed a lack of commitment to these ideals, which, according to Amos, would be met with punishment. His prophetic gaze then turned toward Edom, Ammon, and Moab, other neighboring nations with whom Israel had a complicated history. Edom, in particular, was condemned for its relentless hostility towards Israel, a feud fueled by ongoing resentment and violence. Ammon, meanwhile, was singled out for committing unspeakable atrocities in their pursuit of territorial expansion, even going so far as to kill pregnant women during wartime. Such brutal acts went against both divine commandments and basic human decency, showing a complete disregard for life. Moab, too, faced condemnation for dishonoring the dead, specifically by desecrating the bones of the king of Edom. For Amos, these inhumane acts reflected a blatant defiance of both God's laws and common moral codes, actions that would not go unpunished. Each of these nations was warned of coming judgment, underscoring Amos's message that no one was beyond accountability. Amos's mission, however, was not without personal cost. His commitment to truth and his willingness to confront injustice led to significant opposition. Both the religious leaders and common people of Israel rejected him, preferring to maintain the status quo rather than face the uncomfortable truths he presented. Amos's words threatened the interests of those in power, 
making him an enemy to many influential figures who wanted to silence his voice rather than address the deep-rooted corruption and moral decay he exposed. In this way, Amos was not merely a prophet speaking words of divine truth, but also a disruptive force, challenging a society that had grown complacent in its false sense of peace. One of the most telling encounters in Amos's life was his confrontation with Amaziah, the priest of Bethel. Amaziah held a powerful role as the priest of the royal sanctuary in Bethel, a position that carried both religious and political influence under the reign of King Jeroboam II. He was tasked with maintaining the temple and preserving the kingdom's stability. When Amos began to preach his messages of condemnation, declaring that King Jeroboam would die by the sword and that Israel would face exile, Amaziah perceived him as a threat to the political and religious stability he was sworn to protect. For Amaziah, Amos's words were not divine truth, but dangerous rebellion, threatening the authority of the king and the sanctity of Bethel's religious practices. In response, Amaziah attempted to silence Amos, even going so far as to send a message to the king, accusing the prophet of conspiracy. Amaziah saw Amos as an outsider, a troublemaker who was disrupting the peace and harmony that had been carefully constructed under Jeroboam's rule. The priest's resistance to Amos highlighted a deep-rooted problem in Israel. Religious leaders, rather than leading the people towards true devotion and justice, had become complicit in the corruption and social injustices that Amos denounced. Their focus had shifted from honoring God to preserving their own positions of power and influence. Amos's interaction with Amaziah underscores the difficulties he faced as a prophet of truth. His mission required him to speak out against powerful figures who profited from societal corruption. Unlike other prophets who may have been welcomed or revered, Amos was viewed as a nuisance, an unwelcome voice challenging those who preferred a comfortable, if dishonest, peace. The message of Amos did not conform to the popular narratives of his time, and this made him an outcast among the very people he sought to save. Through his unwavering commitment, Amos became an emblem of prophetic integrity, a figure willing to stand alone against widespread complacency and moral decay. His life and words remind us that true devotion to God requires courage, especially when it means standing against societal norms and confronting uncomfortable truths. Amos's story demonstrates that faith is not a matter of mere ritual or tradition. It demands a commitment to justice, compassion, and the courage to confront wrongdoing, regardless of the personal cost. Feeling increasingly unsettled by Amos's bold predictions, Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, decided he couldn't stand by and let Amos continue. He went directly to King Jeroboam II with a formal accusation, suggesting that Amos's prophecies were stirring rebellion and undermining the kingdom's stability. Amaziah presented Amos not only as a religious nuisance, but also as a potential threat to the king's rule and the welfare of the entire nation. Amaziah claimed that Amos's words were harming the morale of the people, effectively undermining their confidence in the leadership and perhaps even threatening public order. To Amaziah, the prophecies seemed a challenge to the king's authority, not just spiritually, but also politically. Amaziah's aim was clear. He wanted to silence Amos, and he wouldn't hesitate to use the king's authority to achieve this goal. But Amaziah didn't stop at making accusations to the king. He confronted Amos in person, determined to drive him out of Israel. Amaziah said, Go away, seer. Go back to the land of Judah and earn your bread there. Prophesy there, but don't come here to Bethel. This is the king's sanctuary, the national temple. Your presence is neither wanted nor needed. In saying this, Amaziah attempted to delegitimize Amos hinting that he was merely an outsider looking for profit, a profit for hire with no business meddling in Israel's matters. By urging Amos to leave and prophesy in Judah, Amaziah reduced Amos's mission to a money-making scheme, questioning his motives and loyalty. The priest of Bethel saw Amos as a stranger, someone unfit to deliver a message from God to the people of Israel. However, Amos did not back down. His response to Amaziah was unflinching and clear, revealing the depth of his commitment and the divine nature of his mission. Amos replied, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet. 
I was a shepherd, a caretaker of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from my work, from tending the flock, and commanded me to go prophesy to Israel. Here, Amos was emphasizing that he hadn't chosen this role. He was a simple man who had been called by God, not driven by ambition or personal gain. His presence in Israel was a matter of divine command, and no human authority, not even a priest like Amaziah, could deter him from fulfilling this calling. Unwavering in his mission, Amos then turned his prophetic eye directly on Amaziah, delivering a personal prophecy against him. He predicted that Amaziah's own family would face severe consequences. His wife would be dishonored, his children would fall to the sword, his lands would be divided, and Amaziah himself would die far from his homeland in an unclean land. These words served as a dire warning to the priest who would try to silence him, underscoring the power of the prophetic message and the consequences of opposing God's will. Amos's prophecy against Amaziah revealed the inherent power and authority of a message truly inspired by God, a message that couldn't be suppressed or invalidated by human attempts to maintain social or political order. Despite the confrontation, Amos remained steadfast in his prophetic mission, unaffected by the accusations and threats surrounding him. He continued delivering God's messages without hesitation. The strength of his faith and his commitment to obeying God's call remained unshaken, even though he faced strong opposition. Amos was aware of the risks, but he would not be silenced. He understood that his role was to speak the truth, regardless of the consequences, because his ultimate accountability was to God, not to the authorities or powers of Israel. His dedication to his prophetic mission was rooted in an unbreakable trust in God, a trust that enabled him to stand firm despite any threats or accusations. The ultimate fate of Amaziah is not detailed in the Yet the tradition surrounding Amos' prophecies indicates that, like many who resisted God's message, Amaziah likely met with consequences that fulfilled Amos' predictions. Following Amos' ministry, Israel enjoyed a temporary period of prosperity under Jeroboam II, but this would soon crumble. Amos had warned of a future invasion, and not long after his prophecy, the mighty Assyrian Empire did indeed conquer the land leading to a time of exile and displacement for the Israelites. If Amaziah lived to see this, he would have witnessed firsthand the devastation Amos had foretold, the fall of Bethel, the very sanctuary he had sought to protect, and the scattering of Israel, events that marked God's judgment on a people who had strayed from his path. Amos's message, however, was not only about judgment. Despite the harsh tone of his prophecies, Amos also brought a message of hope and redemption. He offered a glimpse of restoration, pointing to a time when God would renew his people and establish them once again. In the final chapters of his book, Amos foretold a future when God would restore a faithful remnant of Israel. This remnant would become the foundation of a renewed nation dedicated to justice and righteousness. Amos prophesied of a time when the Lord would raise up the fallen tent of David, signaling a return to the values and faithfulness that characterized the early days of Israel. This prophecy hinted at the coming of the Messiah, a descendant of David who would embody these virtues and bring God's kingdom into fullness. Amos's hopeful After. message at the end of his prophecies emphasizes God's merciful nature. Even in the face of judgment, God's ultimate desire is for restoration and healing. The severity of the punishment Amos foretold was meant to wake people up, to bring them back to the path of righteousness. But once justice was satisfied, God would bring blessing and prosperity upon those who returned to him with sincere hearts. In this, Amos's prophecies hold a timeless truth. No matter how far one may stray, God's mercy is always available to those willing to turn back to him. As Amos's words resonate through history, they continue to serve as a powerful reminder of both accountability and grace. His unwavering obedience to God's call, his courage in the face of powerful opposition, and his messages of both judgment and hope inspire generations to seek justice and remain true to their convictions. Through Amos, we see that God's prophets are called not only to speak hard truths, but also to offer hope and restoration, paving the way for new beginnings for those who heed the divine call. 
Amos envisioned a time of deep, bountiful peace and prosperity, a period that would starkly contrast with the devastation prophesied earlier. In this anticipated future, Israel would experience a flourishing abundance, as Amos famously described, with the mountains dripping sweet wine, Amos 9 verse 13. In this vision, the people of Israel would once again live in harmony with God, enjoying a peaceful security in their land. This wasn't only a message of comfort. It was a profound reassurance that God's love and commitment to His people would never be fully withdrawn, no matter the trials or past transgressions. Amos's prophecy of restoration promised a future where Israel would not only be physically restored, but undergo a profound spiritual renewal. God would plant his people so securely in the land that they would never again be uprooted, signifying a relationship with God that would be permanently mended and strengthened. Amos's depiction of Israel as a renewed nation, anchored in righteousness and justice, revealed God's desire not only to rebuild the land, but to revitalize the hearts of his people. Through Amos's words, we grasp a remarkable promise of security that goes beyond material stability. It's a promise that encompasses spiritual well-being, a pledge from God that those who remain faithful will find lasting peace under his divine protection. The renewed Israel that Amos speaks of symbolizes a nation realigned with the ideals of justice, where God's presence brings profound stability and blessing. This legacy of Amos as a prophet is enduring and impactful. Though considered a minor prophet, his messages of moral clarity and calls for social justice have reverberated through the ages. His teachings stand as a significant foundation in the biblical tradition, with a bold emphasis on worshiping God authentically by caring for one's neighbor and living in justice. Amos's unrelenting call for equity and social integrity laid the groundwork for later prophets, giving him an influential role in Israel's prophetic literature and solidifying his legacy as a pioneer in advocating for the downtrodden and marginalized. Amos didn't just rebuke Israel for its disobedience. He was the first prophet to address the problems of oppression, corruption, and inequality head-on. His warnings shattered the comfortable belief that Israel, as God's chosen people, would automatically be spared from divine judgment. Instead, Amos cautioned that being chosen by God brought with it an even greater responsibility to uphold righteousness. In Amos 3 verse 2, he declared, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. This profound message introduced a broader understanding of divine justice, one that didn't condone hypocrisy or injustice. For Amos, God's love demanded accountability and honesty, setting a new theological and ethical standard that would influence future generations. The impact of Amos extended beyond his immediate audience. His stance against social injustices inspired later prophets, including Isaiah, Micah, and Jeremiah, who continued his critiques of corruption among the people. Amos set the precedent for a prophetic vision focused on moral and social ethics, establishing the belief that true worship of God required not just sacrifices or rituals, but a genuine concern for how individuals treated one another. Amos's teachings on justice and righteousness have transcended time, influencing social movements and religious leaders worldwide. His famous call, let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream, Amos 5 verse 24, became an anthem for justice. Notably, Martin Luther King Jr. cited this verse in his, I have a dream speech, drawing on Amos's powerful words to inspire change and hope during the civil rights movement. Having understood the journey of Amos and his confrontation with the priest Amaziah, it's clear that Amos's boldness and dedication to God's call leave us with a powerful legacy. Amos exemplifies unwavering obedience, showing us that when we are truly called by God, we cannot back down, even if it means facing opposition from those in power. His example challenges us to reflect on our own lives. Are we willing to heed God's voice? even if it leads to uncomfortable truths and challenges? Or, like Amaziah, are we inclined to resist messages that call for change, preferring to remain undisturbed in our comfort zones? The choice is personal, but the story of Amos reminds us that God's judgment is certain, 
and his justice will ultimately prevail. If this message resonated with you or made you reconsider aspects of your own life, don't let this opportunity slip by. Take a moment to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and join us as we delve deeper into the timeless stories and lessons of the Bible. True wisdom lies in not just hearing God's word, but in responding with humility and faith. Thank you for watching, and may God's blessings be with you on your journey. What's your take on Amos's journey and his unwavering stand for truth and justice? This story challenges us to reflect on the choices we make when confronted with God's call or moments of moral decision. Are there ways in which this narrative resonates with your own life? Or does it challenge you in unexpected ways? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear your perspective. And if this kind of content speaks to you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Let's keep exploring these powerful stories together, drawing inspiration and growing as a community. Thank you for being part of this journey and may the insights from these ancient texts enrich your life today.